Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jim Johnson. I am the project manager and line editor for the Star Trek Adventures role-playing game and the Captain's Log solo role-playing game, both published by Modiphius Entertainment. Uh, this is going to be a short video. I've had some questions on uh, social media and on my channel here about how I've set up my, uh, my process to actually play Captain's Log and to do these videos and stuff. So I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes to, uh, to talk through my setup. Uh, this is by no means imaginable the only way to do it this is just how i do it as a as a writer and a um, editor and as a you know a gamer a player of you know captain's log <laughs> solo rpg um i thought uh, i would just walk through this here real quick uh, give you some ideas here on, the, on tools that i like to use and uh, maybe this will spark some ideas in you to try something yourself maybe if you have better ideas drop them in the comments below i'd love to hear them uh, i'd love to hear how to how to make my process better uh, i always learn from other people so um by all means if you have a, if you see something you like use it if you see something you don't like or you have a better idea on how to do it hey let me know maybe i'll use it uh, maybe i'll use that to you know add to my own processes here so um one second so anyway um I guess from a from a big perspective, from like these actual videos that I do, I use a free software called OBS. Um, I downloaded it from the interwebs. Uh, there are a couple of great tutorials online on how to use it. I'm still learning how to use it, how to sort out my things. Uh, you can create, a, a, you know, a video thing in such a way that you can have different chunks of stuff presented on your screen. That's how I have my little video down here in the corner. I've got the two logos of the two games above me, and then I've got I've usually got stuff over to my side I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the orientation here um so in this case i'm displaying my uh, my scrivener screen i've got scrivener open on my computer and i'm displaying that uh, sometimes i'll display a web browser with pictures from trek core thank you trek core uh, sometimes i'll have a pdf up as well as scrivener up especially when i'm doing my captain's log actual play which i know i'm overdue to get back to but i'll be getting back to it soon uh, i'll put scrivener up on one side and the um, pdf up on the other side so you can so i can reference the rules and also show off scrivener um, and then I've got my dice handy, my physical dice. I don't, use, I don't like to use a, a nap roller. Uh, I've got my physical dice, you know, on hand. And then I've got my uh, my copy of Captain's Log here. Uh, and if you can see that, um, I've got it tabbed up here on the side. I got a whole bunch of tabs on there. It's all the important tables that I think I'll be using frequently. I got tabs on the top, bottom, or actually on the bottom here and on the sides. Eventually, I'll put some tabs on the top to really key stuff. There's also a bookmark, uh, but you know, there are so many great, useful tables in here. That there was no way we could put in 100 bookmarks that would have just been unwieldy but uh, hey it's the modern modern era of modern technology they make these awesome little post-it notes that are sticky and they're sticky enough to stay on a page but they're not so sticky that they're going to tear the pages once you take them off and fortunately we used a heavy enough uh, paperweight in captain's log that i'm not worried about the post-its um, ripping the paper uh, when they come off uh, some rpg books are printed on really 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 super thin paper uh, it's not quite onion skin paper, but it's really thin paper. And I mean, even just a basic post-it note, like, um, um, do I have any handy here? I don't know if I have any handy here. Like, you know, these basic standard, um, ugh, what is this? Like a, like a standard post-it note like this, right? These, even these can tear that really thin paper if you're not careful. So anyway, uh, got all, those are all the tools I've got. Scrivener is a super awesome writing tool. If you are a writer, uh, whether it's a screenplay, stage play, teleplay, novel, short story, um, you know, school papers, term papers, resumes, like whatever you're writing, there's probably a template in Scrivener somewhere for you. It's not super expensive, um, and also it's not super necessary, right? It's it's a nice to have, absolutely. Um, I've found it absolutely invaluable as a writing tool, especially because there is a way that you can go in here and um, create a, a corkboard kind of view. And then you can add um, more, like I'm really into three by five cards. And so what I'll do oftentimes when I'm writing is I'll do a three by five note card for each chapter and say, okay, chapter one, X is gonna happen. Chapter two, X is gonna happen. Chapter three, X is gonna happen. Um, or I'll just start you know, creating cards and saying, okay, here's this, here's this novel I'm writing this has to happen this has to happen i want this to happen i want a scene where this happens and i'll start you know making a big deck a big virtual deck of cards with all these little beats all these little story scenes and things that i want to have happen or character moments or npcs i want to introduce or other things that are happening and i'll just start filling up this this screen with cards and and then i'll start reorganizing them right so like you know a has to happen before b and c happens has to happen before d and i'll start organizing it 
and moving these around and restructuring it and so on and so forth. And that'll actually change the order over here in the outline. Um, and then I can structure a story like that. I, I do this sometimes with uh, Star Trek Adventures, uh, things that I'm writing, like when I wrote um, uh, Keyhole of Eternity for the Tricorder set, uh, those three, those three, com those three short episodes. I had a lot of scenes in there, scenes and encounters, and I was I was using the Scrivener corkboard to help me organize and sort through how that what, what was the flow of that episode of, the, of that mini campaign, and then um, and then I would just go and write the individual scenes and encounters, throw that all together into a uh, into a single document, export it as a Word document, cut and paste that into my template. Uh, for STA, and then I'm off and running. So uh, Scrivener has been a really valuable organizing tool for me, even more than a writing tool. Um, but I do use it for my um, for my drafts. Um, I don't have it. I think it's over in my workspace. Um, I have an Alpha Smart Neo that I use to, I use to write all my first drafts. Uh, it's an, it's like a 23 year old uh, word processor now. Basically, it's the size of a of a keyboard, and it has a little screen. And I do all my first draft writing on it. Put everything into that on a Word draft. Uh, or into into a draft, and then I um, I plug it into my computer with the USB cord, and I dump all that raw text right into the Scrivener. I clean it up and format it, and then I export it to Word, and then I'm off and running with the editing and the finalizing and stuff for uh, for STA and then and then for my fiction writing. Uh, but with uh, with Scrivener here, like you can see, um, these are some of the notes I've been making for my uh, for my actual play. Uh, here's some of the notes I was taking. You know, this is just just straight up notes in uh, standard word paragraph format, bullet points and stuff. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could highlight parts of it if I needed to, or unhighlight parts of it if I needed to. You know, all the usual tools that you would come to expect in a word processor like uh, Word or Google Docs or uh, or Scrivener. So you can go in there and play with that. Uh, like if I were to go here, uh, like this is the uh, this is the actual work in progress of the actual play where I've got the um, the bullet points and the narrative here. Kind of working through it it's still in rough format I'm, I'm still like even though i'm still doing this initial play i i'm not happy with my balance yet right i'm still trying to figure out like do i just do bullet points as i'm working through the story or do i try to turn it into a bit more of a narrative like this um because i'm a writer and a novelist and a short story writer like i just naturally gravitate toward this toward the prose and um just to do bullet points on like how things are going just doesn't feel right to me because it's like oh I want to get to the narrative I want to I want to pull all this, all this together into a narrative, but at the same time I also acknowledge that that like writing a narrative takes a while right it just takes time to put all those words into place, um, whereas with like bullet points and and using Captain's Log to go through the matrices and answer the questions and to come up with new questions, um, I've got to roll the dice and I've got to build the pieces of it together, and I'm just I'm still working through my head like am I okay telling the story in bullet point format uh, so that I can move through it a little quicker, right? Like I, I know that the, 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 the baseline um, stories that we present, that we, ought, that we talk about in Captain's Log, we, we, we used 15, three acts, five scenes per act as kind of a baseline to, 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 to tell a narrative, um, thinking that you could, you could make that longer if you wanted to, or you could make it shorter if you wanted to. And I think I had that moment last week where I was like, oh, wow, I'm just about to start scene three and I've still got 12 scenes to go. That's a lot. <laughs> and I've already done like six videos or something building up to that point. And uh, it's like, oh, gosh, I really need to get cracking on that. And um, and of course, there's other content I want to create for my channel and uh, other work I've got to do for STA and then just life in general. So so maybe for me to speed up the process a little bit of getting through this first story so that I can then sit back a little bit and, and, and just write it all out as a wonderful narrative and then share that narrative with somebody with the world. You know, once I get it on my um, AO3 um, um, website. Uh, I think that might be the approach I take here is that maybe I'll just accept that getting the story out of my head with the book guiding me through it. Maybe that that best format is to actually do bullet points and beats and just working through the scenes that way so that I can check off the boxes and get to a conclusion. And then once I see the totality of it all together, that's when I can take it and, and make it pretty and then present and, and present it um, on AO3 for the world. And then just use these uh, YouTube videos as kind of like the um, the sausage making, right? It's showing you the, the peek behind the curtains, how this all gets done, how to build that story to a satisfying conclusion and then and then clean it up and make it presentable to the world. If that's what, if that's what you wanna do, you are absolutely not required to do that, right? Just for the sake of playing the game and having fun, 
bullet points and dice rolling is probably enough for you. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, you tell me. Uh, I'd love to hear it. You know, put put a comment in the comments thread below. Tell me what you're thinking. Um, but for me, I think there's satisfaction in playing through these scenes and being surprised at what happens. And at the same time, as a storyteller, I would like to be able to take all that great grist of story that I've been able to put together facilitated by the book, right? Of course, the book is a huge component of this. Like all the random tables in here are super important to everything that's happened so far. Um, and, and so maybe I should be comfortable with <laughs> telling the story in bullet points and dice rolling results and just putting them up on here on the screen. And then after we're done with this first episode, maybe then I'll take the, the whole thing and then start revising it into, into prose and then making that available. And with the knowledge that this is never going to be for publication, like I'm never going to make any money off this. I can't uh, make any money off fanfic. Um, but I think just for me as a writer, just for the satisfaction of having done it, I think I'd, that might be the best place to do it. So, you know, thanks for your indulgence as I talk through my process. <laughs> uh, but basically, you know, Scrivener, super useful tool for getting stuff on here. Uh, it's an amazing tool uh, because you can add all kinds of research to your research tab. You can, you can drag in movies. You can drag in uh, pictures. You can drag in web links. Uh, like Wikipedia, you can you can add all kinds of stuff to your binder here. This is this is all called your called your binder, and I have a a project like this for all of my novels, all my short stories, all my campaigns, um, and it, it's just so useful. It's so useful to be able to just drag stuff into it and have it all in one place, as opposed to having like 50 million um, uh, folders and files and uh, external hard drive or cloud solution or something. Like this one project, this one project right here called uh, CL, CL Demo One, this will hold absolutely everything I can imagine dragging into here for this project. And like if I were to show you one of my novel projects, in fact, I've got a whole series of videos about Scrivener and uh, when I was writing um, uh, Pistols and Pyramids seven years ago. If you really feel like you want to go watch those, go watch those. Um, where like all the research, all the data, all the research, all the websites, all the sketches that my, write, my artist was making, um, just all the random bits and bobs that I found in life and on the internet, I just dragged them all right into that project, and they were all there in the background of the project. And then I'd have the working manuscripts, you know, up above in the working section. Uh, so Scrivener, super powerful tools, uh, writing tool. There is probably more under the hood than you will ever need for your writing purposes. But once you figure out how to use what's there for your purposes, it's a great tool, especially if you're into um, indie publishing and independent publishing. There, it is sophisticated enough now that you can actually export your final document into a, a, a Kindle file version or a Mobi f version or an ebook version or EPUB, like all the different variants. You could export all of them right out of Scrivener, right into that format, um, which makes it super easy to then go publish your ebooks and, and go get it, out, get it out to a world uh, worldwide audience. Um, so anyway, um, what else is there to say about Scrivener? I think that's it. I mean, really, um, I'm just, as I do my actual play, um, I'm updating Scrivener. I've got the PDF next to me on the screen. Um, I think for my future uh, actual plays, I'll just turn off the video because you don't need to watch me while I'm <laughs> typing and, and rolling dice. I'll, I'll just, you know, leave, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the logo on. I'll turn my video off um, and I'll just put the PDF right in the space where my, uh, my face would normally be. And that way you're kind of seeing the, 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 the book, right? The, the actual book, the PDF on the screen, if you need it, just a reference, just to have it there. Um, and then I'll just continue to build the, the text as we go here. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the tools I use. Uh, Adobe, uh, uh, Alpha, Alpha Smart Neo for all my typing uh, because it's uh, distraction free and the battery life on it is astounding. Uh, when I had a um, rechargeable battery in it, I would get hundreds of hours of life on the rechargeable battery before I had to plug it in. And now that the rechargeable battery finally died after 18 years of use, I now have, I think it's either three or six double A's that go in there. And like I, I put those double A's in there two years ago and I haven't had to replace them yet. And I, and I use it daily, right? So the, the battery life on it is like disgustingly awesome. Uh, partly because there's not really much to it, right? You turn it on, you type, you turn it off, you're done. Um, there's no internet, there's no email, there's no games, there's no 
functionality other than a calculator if you need a calculator for some reason uh, but it's just basically eight eight files that you can use to type stuff in and then you dump all that text right onto the screen so for me super useful tool it, it is probably the most indispensable tool for writing that i've used over the last 20 years other than my brain in my fingers uh, to type so um, i recommend it you can get them super cheap on ebay if you want to if you if you need if you're the kind of writer that needs a tool that will not distract you right because like computers are distracting ipads are distracting um, there are other tools out there that you can write on that are connected to the internet and that's it's so easy oh i'm going to type a couple chap i'm going to type a couple paragraphs and oh did i get any email oh and now i'm distracted and oh no and now, now, now i'm down the rabbit hole of research and i'm often not writing uh, but then you come back to the writing eventually so for me it's an indispensable tool so alpha smart neo uh, Scrivener, Captain's Log, the book, and PDF with my tabs. Uh, got a couple dice, a couple actual dice off and running, and uh, and time, and that's all I need. Uh, and then when I'm actually recording these things, I'm using um, OBS to pull it all together. Um, I bought myself a new mic uh, on uh, Amazon Prime Day a month or so ago, uh, which is uh, was really nice because once I discovered I was going to be doing a lot more videos. Um, I was like, well, I really need to up my game a little bit here and stop using the built-in microphone that's in the in the Mac <laughs> that I've been using for 20, well, 15 years or so. Uh, so at some point, I'll probably upgrade the video um, here, but the camera still seems to be working okay uh, for what I need it to do. So um, that's my setup. It's not it's not fancy. It's not state of the art. It gets the job done. And as a Gen Xer, that's that's what I like. Uh, my car is 23 years old. My wife's car is 22 years old. So they're not pretty. They're not fancy. But they got four wheels and an engine, and they get us to where we need to go. We don't care about going in style. Right? This is just the quirk of us. So for me, for my writing, like as long as it gets the job done, I don't care about the bells and whistles, right? And Scrivener, to be honest with you, has more bells and whistles in it than you can possibly need. It's not a sexy, uh, you know, clearly it's not a sexy uh, interface. It's, it's clearly built to get the job done. And this is no, you know, offense to sh the people that make Scrivener because they, they've made an incredible, incredible tool. Uh, is it slick and pretty? No, but it doesn't need to be. It's, it's a word processor. It's a, it's a tool to help you get your story made and done and formatted so that you can share it with the world on, on, on ebook or Kindle or readers or like whatever, um, or even, even print formatting. Like you can, you can perfectly easily use Scrivener to do your print formatting and then export that to um, have in a file that you can get ready for printing your novel or short story or collection or whatever it is you're doing, uh, except maybe graphics. Like if you have graphics in your book, uh, like I, w I wouldn't use Scrivener to, um, to lay out an RPG book. It just doesn't have, it's just not built to do that. You would want InDesign or, or something powerful like that and use an industry standard for, for graphic design work. And Scrivener is not a graphic design program, uh, but if you are making stories, like if you're making novels, uh, it will absolutely do the job. And I don't have my, I don't have any of my books handy. Uh, I would show it to you, but you can do great stuff with Scrivener. Uh, just, just if you're doing like a book, if you're doing like a novel or, or even nonfiction without pictures, but I can't, I couldn't tell you the last time I read a nonfiction book that didn't at least have charts or pictures in it. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm rambling at this point. Hopefully this was a useful video telling you about my setup, how I'm using Scrivener, how I'm using Alpha Smart Neo, how I'm getting the story together, how I'm using Captain's Log with the tabs to, um, to get my story in order here and to actually use this as a tool because this isn't just a book, it's a tool. Um, it's also literature. If you talk to my friends, uh, Brad and Jason over at Dyson Mind, the podcast, wonderful podcast, if you have an opportunity to check it out. Um, anyway, so thanks for your time. Thanks for your patience. Any questions, drop them down below. Love to hear your comments and your thoughts. Uh, like and subscribe if you feel so inclined to do so. Otherwise, thanks so much for being here. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Thanks, y'all.